Hey family, thank you all so much for tuning in. I pray that you're well. I'm excited to see you guys and to share this word of the Lord with you. I heard the phrase, the door of many doors. And then some of you are in this place where you feel like you're lazy, but you're waiting on God and those two should not be confused. And so this word really was stirring on my heart over the weekend. And then yesterday I was talking to one of my dear sisters in Christ and confirmation just started coming forward. And then today the Holy Spirit just let loose and just downloaded some rhema into my spirit. So I want to release it because I know it is such a now word for the body of Christ. And it's going to help many of you to get clear on where you are in this season and to move forward and prepare yourself for the next thing that God is about to do in your life. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word. I ask that it be all of you and none of me, that it be seed planted in the hearts and minds of your people, that you will give increase to in due season. Father God, give me a fresher anointing and revelation as I release this word to your people in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And so this morning I heard the phrase, the door of many doors. And thus says the Lord, think it not strange the opportunities that I have for you. One will say go left, another will say go right, but I say wait on me as I reveal the mystery door that I have been preparing for you. And so think it not strange, meaning whenever God reveals to you what he's doing or what's behind the door, meaning your next season, your next assignment, like what you're about to be doing, because many of you are in transition, right? And so he's saying, think it not strange, the Ephesians 3.20 right? The, him making the impossible possible. Him doing exceedingly abundantly above what you can ask or think. Him delivering his promise to you in a different way than what you've been uh, meditating on or what you've been trying to figure out or how you think it's going to be, right? So he's saying, if you've been speaking to someone about this, or if you've been in your own thoughts about which way it should go, he's saying, no, you you have no idea what he's about to do. Thank you, Lord. And this is a good thing. He says, in just a little while, I will bring you into the valley of decision, the valley where there is peace and grace to carry you through what would be a time of confusion and chaos if you were trying to enter in without me, says the Lord. And so if you're in a place of confusion, mental confusion, chaos mentally, right? And some of you, this displaying out in your natural life, right? The confusion and chaos. He's saying, wait on me. He's going to show you what to do in the valley of decision. He, you will know this by the spirit. And that means you will feel his peace and his grace. And this is what he's saying he's going to give you in the valley. A valley is a place of refreshing. A valley is a place where the water is. A valley is a place where you can rest. A valley is a place where you can lay down in green pastures. Come on, Holy Spirit. The Lord says, waiting on me is not a curse. It is a blessing that will make rich with no sorrow added to it. That's Proverbs 10, 22. My eyes have seen your heart and I have filled it with my desires. Watch as I shift you into this next season with joy, ease, and strength. Narrow is the way. You're making it through the bottleneck of your journey into the next season, says the Lord. So if we think about a bottle, how it's skinny at the top and then it's bigger on the bottom, right? And so this is the metaphor that God was giving me as far as a bottleneck traffic situation. So in traffic, it's like you may have four lanes open and maybe there's some construction or something going on, some type of chaos and confusion on the highway. Okay, come on, somebody. And then the lanes narrow down, right? And everybody has to fall in line somewhere so that they can make it through. And then the, the road opens back up, right? And so it takes time and patience and strategy to reposition, switch lanes if necessary, and push through the times of uncertainty and the lack of clarity. So I hope you're imagining this as I explained it, like on the highway with construction and you're being rerouted and repositioned to get in line to make it through that narrow way. Thank you, Lord. And so as you cross the intersection of this transitional phase in your life, as you're getting kind of herded in, as I see it now, like sheep, right? God is just redirecting you and he's herding you in, herding you in. 
into the narrow way. So whatever that is that has to shed off of you in that wide open space, come on, Lord. He's shedding that off of you now in the valley. He still wants you to rest. Come on, somebody. But he's going to lead you into that bottleneck, so to speak. And so as you cross into the intersection in this transitional phase of your life, get ready to take off again as you come through the narrow path. Thank you, Lord. Enjoy the freedom and the space that you will have in this next season to be creative, not bound by fear, comparison, doubt, or unfruitfulness. Don't feel the need to rush. And this is what some of us do sometimes when we're naturally in those traffic situations, right? As soon as you get into clarity, you just want to floor it, right? So you can make up time and all of that stuff, right? And God was showing me, no, he's saying, don't feel the need to rush to get to that next destination as soon as you gain clarity or as soon as the road clears, right? You don't have to make up time, so to speak. God is going to do that. He's going to give you back the time and the years that the locust has eaten. Thank you, Lord. And so don't feel the need to rush. Do the speed limit and you will make it to the door of your next destiny assignment on time and stress-free. And so naturally, when we rush like that, it causes stress. It causes anxiety. We may even miss our exit, right? And I know some of you have seen this before where you're driving down the street and somebody may be driving like a maniac behind you and swerving and trying to speed ahead. And then you end up at the same stoplight that they're at. Come on, somebody. It's like you're going nowhere fast. And this is what God is saying. If you try to rush or speed through this next season of your life, you can miss the divine appointments and instructions that he has for you along the way. And so you have to be where God has called you to be so that everything aligns to his will and timing. Wait on him and understand that waiting on the Lord is not the same as laziness. And many of you have been fighting that in this season where it seems like you're being lazy because you feel like you should be doing something. But God is saying, wait on me, wait on me, wait on me. And so in this, the Lord began to remind me of this movie called Idlewild. And it was made in 2006. Cicely Tyson was in the movie the two guys from the rap group outcast okay so i haven't seen this movie in years and as holy spirit brought it to my remembrance i was like oh my god but the revelation that i'm about to drop on you guys is i had no idea what this meant as well but this scene of the movie always stuck out to me and i see why god brought it up today and so let me just set the scene so in this scene Mother Hopkins, who was Cicely Tyson, was sitting in her car with her grandchildren on the side of this dirt road. And so as Rooster, who was played by Big Boy from Outcast, was driving through, he saw her car sitting there and went to go see about her. So they began to have this conversation. He's wondering why she's on the side of the road, like, is anything wrong? And she began to tell him, the Lord spoke to me this morning. He told me to get in my car and to drive until he told me to stop. And she said, I did that. Then he said, turn here on this dirt road, turn your car off or park it and turn your car off and wait. And she said, I did that. And she said, I've been waiting here for seven hours. And so she's looking confused. He's looking confused, like what is going on? And so as she's trying to catch the revelation, he goes in his pocket and pulls out a bunch of money to give to her. And then the revelation drops on her that he was sent by the Lord for her provision as a resource for the provision that she needed. And in the interim, she had given him a Bible, which ended up saving his life a little later on in the movie. But this is what blew my mind. The Holy Spirit prompted me to look up the word Idlewild and what it means. And so this is the metaphor. It can refer to a place, a person, or thing. It is a metaphorical term used to describe a state of calm, quiet, inactivity, or rest. It can imply a feeling of leisure 
or a period of time when there is no specific purpose or active engagement in any task or activity. So this is not you confusing waiting on God with laziness. Come on, somebody. And so this is where many of you are right now. You're in your idle wild, so to speak. And God wants you to know that you're right where you're supposed to be. He's going to send you what you need. He's going to tell you which way to go. He's going to give you your instructions. Whether you've been waiting seven weeks, seven days, seven months, seven years whatever it's been seven hours i don't know but god knows and he's going to give you what you need he's going to send you what you need and you will journey through the bottleneck soon okay that valley of decision right that's your place of rest and when he tells you what to do you do it in the mighty name of jesus so that you can experience all that he has promised you in your next season hallelujah so listen, I have a few scriptures. Isaiah 48, 17. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should go. Psalm 37, 4 through 5. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. Revelation 3, 8. I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. And because of that, God is about to blow your mind in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that this word has blessed you like it has blessed me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Play it back to get into your spirit. Thank you all for supporting this ministry. Whatever you're doing, sharing, liking the video, subscribing, whatever it is, sowing into this ministry, into my life. Those of you who have done so, may the Lord continue to bless you 100, 1,000 fold in the mighty name of Jesus. I love you guys so much with the love of Christ. Most importantly, Jesus loves you and I'll talk to you soon.